it's like we're not just healing ourselves. And I think this is where people people don't realize this until they get really deep into the work. Um, where it's like, oh, I have all this anxiety. Um, I just have to heal this anxiety. But you're not really healing the anxiety um, because what usually happens is that you inherited that anxiety from like pr past generations. Um, you know, we call this like generational trauma or intergenerational trauma. And, you know, a lot of times traumatic events from the past, they ripple down through generations. And, you, you know, you, you can see this in simple examples, like people who survived the Great Depression, like the way they think about money and food, it's different yeah. than like normal, you know, you know, like like when food is abundant, you know, um, but they teach that to their kids and, and maybe they'll have a lot of anxiety around food and money and they'll pass that on to their kids. And now their kids have this, they grew up and they inherited this this generational trauma. It wasn't their, it wasn't their fault at all. It was from pre, pre previous generations, um, but they're stuck with it. And then if they don't heal it, it's going to get passed on to their kids and so on and so forth. You know, for me, there's a lot of trauma for me, my family, there's a lot of sexual trauma, a lot of sexual mm -hmm. trauma, a lot of, a lot of violent trauma um, passed down from generation to generation. Um, and I mean, when you look at my family, my family history, it has, it has everything. Like any, everything that's ever been dysfunctional has happened to someone, some relative in my family, um, if not multiple afflictions. So <laughs> for me, there's a lot of, I'm healing, you know, tens of, of uh, generations of trauma, right? Like who knows how far it goes back? Yeah. Uh, and that's why it takes a lot of time. That's why it takes a lot of money. And that's why it takes a lot of effort is you're not just working on your own issues. You're working on the issues of your parents, your grandparents, you know, your aunts and uncles. You're working on all of that. Like everything that's been passed down to you, that's what you're working on. That's also why it's so expensive. Um, a lot of guys, they, you know, they get frustrated. They're like, why does it take so much time, so much effort to just fix these things for me to be normal? Yeah. And yeah. On one hand, I do kind of get the frustration because it's like, why can't I just be normal? Um, but that's not how life works. So the sooner you accept that life doesn't work that way, the sooner you can let go of all this frustration. Right? The frustration comes from focusing on things you can't change. You can't change what you were born into. You can't change what happened to you as a kid. You can't change what happened to your parents or your grandparents. Uh, but you can change what's happening now. Right. And you can change your actions. You can change, you know, yeah. your uh, responses to these issues and you can take responsibility for them, you know? And then I get some guys and, and they're a little bit more immature where they're like, why do I need to take responsibility for the mistakes of my parents? And they're like, well, you don't, but that, but then you're just going to stay neurotic. Mm. Uh, so it's like, if you want to get better, then you do have to take on that responsibility. And there's an empowerment that comes from it too. Uh, I feel very empowered when I think about like, oh, I, I, me, Chris Alvino is is the first, the first of my lineage to be conscious, conscious, conscious of the generational trauma, hmm. and me having that sight, that visibility, means that I have the opportunity to be the first one to actually heal, heal the mistakes of all of my. Uh, ancestors healing all their mistakes it's like it's it's basically like black panther <laughs> you know it's it's i mean that's what it feels like it's it, you have all of these old black panther kings and you have their history of mistakes and um uh what's his name i can't think of his actual name but the current black panther he's uh he's the first to realize that they've made a mistake and now he's empowered to fix it. Hmm. And there, for me, I think there's a lot of power in, in admitting that you come from a lineage uh, of trauma, right? Or a lineage of pain, and you're the one who's gonna fix it. You're, you get to yeah. be the hero in this epic intergenerational story. Um, so that. for me, there's a lot of power in that. Other guys see it differently. They're like, well, why wasn't I, why wasn't I dealt a better hand? And it's like, well, that's just wishing. 
Right. <laughs> and uh, I love the phrase, you can wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which hand fills up first. Um, I think my, well, you know, that that's definitely said in my family a lot. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's true. You could keep wishing um, or you could actually do something. Um, and so for me, again, I'm all about effective action. I'm all about like doing things that actually work and worrying and fretting or wishing doesn't uh, change anything. Yeah. It might make you feel better or it might make you feel more, um, what's the word? Like content, right? Or justified in your anger, uh, yeah. but it's not going to change anything. And, and again, I'm all about like, I don't care what you're feeling. Uh, I don't care about any of that. I just care about results and, and having effective action. So, you know, part of this is you got to ask yourself, is it worth it to fret or can you just start taking responsibility and taking action?